Hey guys, Drew here over at Rev Hiker Outdoors, and I want to bring you a video today about modifying and making your own gear. Um, I know I've talked a few times about different things that I've made, um, and specifically, a lot of the stuff that I've done has actually just been modifications. Um, I made my own camp stove, I've tried making my own packs before, um, I've made packs out of other packs. Um, so, the thing with making my own my own stuff from scratch is a lot of the times I don't have the time or the patience. Uh, I just try to kind of wing everything. Um, so that's why I prefer to just get something that's pretty close to what I want and then modify it. Um, so I'm going to give you a few examples of some of the modifications and attempts that I've had today. Um, and then I want to just give you a little how-to if you're thinking about modifying uh, like something like a pack, say. Um, because that's probably been the most, the heaviest modifications that I've done to anything has been my packs and trying to go ultralight. So when I first started trying to go ultralight, uh, the pack I had was massive. Um, you know, it was um, 5,500 cubic inch uh, EMS pack and a really nice pack, comfortable. I mean, I liked everything about it, but, you know, I decided that I really want to go ultralight. And the first thing I did is I had these huge side pockets on it, and I chopped them off. Um, I had two of these, um, and I actually took one of these and sewed some straps onto the back and made it a little backpack for one of my daughters just so she could bomb around and feel like, you know, she was doing stuff with Daddy. Um, but anyway, I took uh, two of these off and then a huge front pocket that was probably about three times the size of this. Um, and you know these things are just they just had stitching down the side so you could stuff skis or poles in behind them um, so that was the first thing I did I tried to pack a little less and then I just uh, I took all the extra pockets off the outside um, because I could fit you know everything I needed and more on the inside once I started going down on some of the double and triple options I had for all my gear. Um, so I did that, and then then I wasn't happy with it. I started looking online, and, and I saw some guys using lumbar packs. I said, man, that's cool, but at the time I didn't really have the money, and uh, so I said, well, you know what? I, I can sew a little bit, so let me try to make a lumbar pack. So that's the next thing I did. I cut all of this off of the pack. This was the uh, top pocket. I cut, I cut the whole wings and the side off of it. Um, you can see this, these are the shoulder straps. I mean, I, I, I chopped a ton off. Um, and I just like lopped the, the pack in, in more than half. Um, and then what I was left with was this. And there's actually more cut off that I didn't show, but what this is, um, is <clears throat> basically, uh, this is just the bottom pouch of the of the pack. This is where um, it had the secondary zipper, so that I could um, excuse me, so I could um, you know you just take your sleeping bag out separately. I basically cut the whole top of the pack and just left the sleeping bag compartment on the bottom. Um, the top flap is just a piece left over from the from the um, the front of the pack, and I just sewed that onto the back and kind of sewed around it, um, sewed it to a piece with where the zipper was, basically left the zipper intact and then flopped a piece down and sewed it on top. Um, and I was left with, you know, with kind of this, this monstrosity. And the issue with this um, is that the hip belt was all comfortable and, and all that, um, but the pack came out so far from my back that it was just like, I don't know, it just, obviously it was nothing compared to uh, the Mountain Smith daylight that I eventually got, but, you know, you can see I did some pretty sloppy modifications here trying to um, get some support, and then it's tied on with paracord because I couldn't sew through the hip belt, and um, so this, this was pretty cheesy. Uh, I'll admit some of you guys are probably at home like, oh my gosh, that, what a Frankenstein piece of garbage bag that is. Um... And I would agree with you. Um, so that was kind of my my first real attempt at getting something really ultralight. 
Um, and then I got this bright idea. I had this old um, Amazonas, um, just nylon hammock. And I said, well, you know, I haven't really used that in a million years. And uh, so, hey, I'll try to make a pack out of that. So I took that material because I didn't want to go out and buy any. And um, this is what I, I got out of that. I just used some really wide webbing, some old seat belts out of a car, actually. Um, I made like a mesh pouch on the back for my sleeping pad to go in. And that was going to be like the, um, that was going to be like the, the support of it, the frame. Um, but I ended up just making the thing way too big. You can see it's, it's just gigantic. I made it almost the same cubic inch as my original pack, and it was just, uh, you know, it was not working. I, I sewed a, I don't know, this thing was a mess too. I, I put these extra loops in, and I laced it to try to scrunch it in more. But anyway, I ended up just canning that, and uh, which it was a really light pack, and it was all that but it was just so floppy and, and messed up and it was no good so then what I started doing is I just I spent a little bit of money on packs and I started modifying them so the first lumbar pack that I wanted to get into before I got you know I wanted to see if I'd like them really before I you know stepped up and bought you know something a little more expensive so I went to Wally World and I got this uh, outdoor products now they do sell Outdoor products is sold in more uh, companies than just Walmart, so um, you know you can go elsewhere. And originally, I did nothing to this pack, um, and it was all insulated on the sleeves and had all this padding and this and that and the other thing. Um, but I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I did to this, so you can kind of get an idea. Now, for for the insulation in here, basically you just have to kind of muscle it out and turn this inside out. I cut back the fabric in here and I left it so I could show you and then you just you just tear all the stuff out it's really not sewn in there too strong so you can just pull that stuff right out and if you look in here you'll see that there's just nothing left on the inside of this pack there was a divider in there that I took out there was all this cushion and, and nylon and there's like four layers of fabric and material in there I took all that stuff out like I said I took out the inside pocket so now uh, this other zipper on it just goes right to the main compartment as well. Um, I just tore out basically every single thing in there that I didn't need because all I wanted was just a basic pack. I just wanted, uh, you know, one container. Didn't have to have all this organization. I've got everything in little bags, so this is what I did to that. Um, so, the, you know, and then, then of course, I've got um, got some total do-it-yourself gear where I just took plastic and you know I made made my uh, hammock tarp out of this and uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put a link to that video in this one if you want to check that out um, I made my own um, camp stove out of a, a soda can um, and I've done things like that but what I wanted to do today is I'm gonna just show you uh, maybe you're like, well, I, I want to try this, but I'm not really sure. I don't want to cut a hole in my pack and have it ruined, and, and I don't really have the ability to sew, but there is some stuff on my pack or some other piece of gear that I'd like to take off. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gonna move the camera, and I'm going to take a, a piece off of a pack that I have that I use for my winter gear uh, and I'm, that's totally useless to me, and I'm just going to show you guys <clears throat> how I take it off so maybe you can get started with it. Uh, so just stick around and let me get the camera moved. Okay guys, so I'm back. Um, so this is this is the piece of gear I want to modify now. I know it's hard to see um, the, the whole picture, but basically this is just a High Sierra pack. Um, it's, I think, 45 liter. It's what I use for, for winter uh, ultralight um, backpacking because I can't quite get all my gear into some of my other stuff. Um, if I have to like strap snowshoes to it, um, this this is really rough, tough material. I can throw crampons in there. So anyway, yes, it is a lot heavier, but you have to make some exceptions in the winter. So anyway, I'm just going to show you guys uh, a couple little modifications that I'm going to do to this, um, and uh, you know how you can get out stitching um, and still you know keep the integrity of all the materials involved. So. Uh, truth be told, I don't use, I mean, I know you can use seam rippers and you can use scissors and stuff like that, but honestly, this is really all I ever use. 
Uh, this is my Leatherman Charge TTI. Um, I I just keep this thing pretty sharp, and uh, I do pretty much everything with this. So I'm going to show you my way of doing this. Um, now, what you want to do, and and just remember, guys, um, always practice good knife safety. Don't be don't be cutting towards yourself. Don't you know? Just be be responsible. All right. Um, and if you're young, you know, have have a parent with you. Um, so I just start by getting underneath this and just slowly, because I'm not trying to rip anything, um, just cut there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this this uh, little daisy chain looking thing. Um, it serves no purpose. I strap nothing to it. So I'm going to remove this. I'll probably remove this because, again, I, I don't use these things. The only thing I need this for is I just, I, I actually don't even need the top because I don't use the top flap on this. So really I could remove this whole thing, but uh, I'm going to refrain just in case I ever do want to use the top pouch. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to show you how I do this. Now, what you're going to want to do is pull this back. And I don't know how well it's going to show up, but you can see the thread of this stitching start to be exposed. So what I do is I just put some good tension on it. And again, you need a sharp knife for this. Um, I just start to just touch those pieces of thread and because you only want to cut the thread you don't want to you're not looking to cut any of the material you just want to get the stitching and this thing the way they made this is uh, you know they, they put really heavy stitching in here so you can see this is not material this is just this is literally just the stitching and you can, once once it's there, you can just pull it right out. Um, so you're just going to want to go ahead and, and do that all the way all the way down. Now, if you guys have ever skinned an animal uh, or you're hunters, then this is going to come kind of easy to you. All this really is is skinning. And you just want to keep on the side of the webbing so that you're making sure you're not cutting into this. But just make gentle, you know, kind of go easy on it. And uh, you're just... The reason you're putting the tension on there is you're trying to expose the thread and the stitching. So you can just go right down the line. Now again, you could use um, like a stitch stitch ripper or something like that. Um, I don't even bother. This works really well for me. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't take all that long. Now, if I wasn't doing this on camera and I could just focus on doing it and trying to not have my hands in the way and stuff um, I could certainly do it a lot quicker um, but even with me kind of taking my time for this you can see it's not all that time consuming and and I'm just going real easy on this I don't want to not looking to cut anything now when you get down to the bottom you have a couple choices um, you can just try to cut it nice and flush or uh, you could leave a little bit of a tag and then sear it with like a lighter or a match or something like that um, so that you don't get the little frizzes. Um, I'm just going to cut it cut it pretty close here. Um, again, trying to do this and staying out of your way. Just nice and soft. There you go. Uh, and then when we come back to the top, it'll kind of be the same thing. You can just pull it back whatever way you can do it. At this angle here. And then uh, like I said, just very gently come through here. See, now someone's going to say, you're cutting towards yourself. Well, I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just letting the knife do the work. And so when this releases, the knife isn't popping back towards me because I'm not ramming on this thing. That's why it's important to have a sharp knife. Um, dull knives are what gets people hurt because you have to ram on it so hard. So keep your stuff sharp and uh, you won't have those issues. So there you go. This is just, uh, so now that's out of the way. Now what I would do is go through and pick all this stuff off. Um, but like I said, you can just go through and just take off all these things that, that you just don't need. Um, that thing was totally pointless to me. There's another, you know, there's other straps and accessories on this thing that I just don't need. 
Um, another way is if you have a detachable top pocket like this had, just take it right off um, and save it. You know, um, I took mine off because I know that I'm never going to use it. So anyway, um, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> and now it kind of got me thinking maybe next time I'll do a, a video on how to keep your, your camp knife sharp uh, because it can really save your butt in a pinch. So anyway, guys, um, maybe you've got gear. You don't really want to lay out money to get new stuff, but with some modifications and a little time and creative thought, you can strip your pack down of all the unnecessary things, and uh, you can kind of start your journey to ultralight uh, totally free just by taking certain things off. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. So I just kind of plant this right where I want it. There we go.